Did you know there was a fact that in South America, Chile's Atacama Desert, it is very similar to Mars's terrain. So there was a fact that Space Odyssey, which was a movie, has many scenes. They were performed in South America, Chile's Atacama Desert, since it has a very similar terrain compared to Mars. That's cool, right? Also, NASA tests its instruments on this kind of terrain. That's really cool. Now, I've seen a lot of videos on how people say, claim that Elon Musk in probably 2050, he will make Mars into our next Earth, which is kind of what they were going for. But I started off with Venus. I'm going to talk about Mars now. But I want to terraform Mars properly, like make it like an actual Earth. And no mirrors, no nothing. Except we're going to heat up Mars so much that it releases a ton of oxygen and nitrogen. You know, step one, the atmosphere. So let me explain. Mars is a dusty red planet. It has a lot of iron oxides and every square kilometer is covered in 50 kgs carbon dioxide and about 750 kgs oxygen. But it's lacking nitrogen, so it has a very thin atmosphere. But why do we want Mars to be terraformed? Since it has frozen polar ice caps. Yeah, it's located in several different parts of Mars and that could make frozen oceans. So not only an atmosphere, but also water. Pretty cool. Now we need a big, very big laser to also terraform making land, to make it fertile like a volcanic mountain kind of range and we needed to melt the polar ice caps and also release a bunch of carbon dioxide and oxygen so the most powerful here is the Eli NP laser which only burns for a trillionth of a second and it produces 10 petawatts of power that's a lot but we need a laser double the size of that or at least two of these kinds of lasers so we'll have a solar pump laser since it's coming from the sun and that will be so no energy is wasted and it will go on for a very long time probably like 60 day 60 years yeah almost a generation huh? now as it does it will if our lasers are efficient we can melt at least only eight kilometers down we only need to burn eight thousand meters down to release a lot of oxygen and a lot of carbon dioxide and it will look terrifying since the polar ice caps will also melt since we know that chemistry works water vapor will rise up forming clouds and drop as snow and thus Mars will become very cold but also very hot so it will also form shallow oceans and also volcanic land so I think our first inhabitants for these kind of um, terrain is volcanic plants of course so Mars is going to be like a black planet and kind of red kind of black and a shallow ocean and then also it is very flammable flammable as in there's a lot of oxygen and carbon dioxide that's why we need nitrogen and nitrogen fixing bacteria so we can import nitrogen from a moon of Saturn, which I discussed in the, in the first video we said, which is Titan. Titan has, oh my God, a ton of nitrogen. It is almost filled to the brim with nitrogen. So we can export nitrogen, compress it into liquid and boom it on Mars. Like literally just put it in a canyon and just into Mars. So we've already made individual transportations to Saturn in just seven days. So this should be easy since well earth is much farther away from saturn than mars yeah we have nitrogen fixing bacteria which will turn nitrogen into nitrate compounds for more complex species of life so we already have nitrogen mixed with oxygen so if we add too much nitrogen we can always add this bacteria and use the compounds for more plants and species of life since mars is now still a quite black blue planet with a ton of cyanides which are used to form more plants we still need to add species since 
they also help in consuming oxygen giving out carbon dioxide it also somehow stabilizes mars so our best bet is to add very tiny microscopic animals like tardigrades uh, if you didn't know tardigrades are actually really the strongest animals they're like this small they're so strong they can act extreme pressure extreme heat extreme everything so our best bet is to add them and if they die they reproduce like so quickly then we can add fish and if we're efficient maybe even sharks and as for the cyanides they're gonna add our plant life that was probably hundreds of billions of years ago that they helped making Earth's biosphere, meaning plants. But we don't want to add too much since too many plants might consume too much carbon dioxide which might produce oxygen and also get oxygen. So it's really bad and it also might make us it flammable again. It's really bad. It takes hundreds of years for Mars to finally stabilize and then we can add some human spaceships and boom, we're done with terraforming Mars. Wait, we forgot one thing. How are we gonna grow these plants? I mean, we established water and everything, but we need one more crucial thing. We need soil. Now, how are we gonna do that? We have a big laser. So since we have volcanic, uh, like that kind of volcanic terrain, we can either let the frozen oceans or oceans just weather them down, weather them down, and then let it do. Or we can just do it manually with a giant laser. So we can turn the laser beam on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off. So it will keep crumpling and crumpling and crumpling. And then we can add a little bit of water and we can just enrich that kind of soil with some fungi or maybe cyanides or whatever. And then we can add our first plant species, which are actually not from cyanides, which are volcanic plants, of course. So after some time, they will be the seeds for a very big biodiversity. A lot of animals, a lot of honeybees, not mosquitoes though. So let's get over with it. Atmosphere, big laser, really big snow form since, well, frozen ice caps will evaporate into the air, fall as snow, and we'll get a shallow, a shallow ocean. Then volcanic ash land are formed due to the big Eli and P times two laser. Let's get over with this thing. First, atmosphere, then biosphere, then of course, us. So in the atmosphere, Big laser, ELINP times 2 power, which shoots a very big laser beam, solar pumped, which really just releases the polar ice caps, which over time it will make it snow. After all the land cools down and whatever, after it snows, it will form shallow oceans. Then we can add some nitrogen compressed into liquid from Titan and Saturn to Mars. We've already made some transportations from Earth to Saturn should, should be easy in seven days or maybe less. Then we can add some nitrogen fixation bacteria and cyanides to make a green plant life and fix nitrogen and make it into nitrate compounds which are four more complex species. Then we can add our enriching mud techniques which is crumpling the whole terrain volcanic land with our big laser on and off on and off on and off some crumples we add a little bit of water and then we have our enriched mud we can add some fungi or whatever to enrich it even more then we can finally add our plants and then they will act as the seeds for a new forest even more and finally Finally, add some fish, add some sharks, add some microorganisms, add some tardigrades, add human colonies. Will it last though, though? The last chapter, the long future. Mars has, actually doesn't have any magnetic field like Earth. But we can make our magnetic field. I was like, huh? How do you do that? And then I researched about it and I was like, huh? you can get nuclear facilities make a giant umbrella powered by them which acts as a giant umbrella 
which forms the magnetic field from cosmic rays or any solar radiation and then boom we're done this video ended short so just me signing off <laughs>